I think building a really strong application for a group leader position takes a long time. It takes time to think about the science. It takes time to work out how to communicate the science and it takes time to present it well. So in my mind, obviously the research is in the center. It has to be world-class research and a very coherent research program that really takes into account the unique strengths of the applicant, but also the environment that they will find themselves in. So I think the uh, having, uh, making clear that that's, that's your original and novel idea that uh, uh, only you can pursue what makes you the most uh, candidate to pursue that novel idea. Um, but also um, showing that you have the expertise uh, and knowledge to be able to successfully um, complete it. When we read your application, we're going to be reading it with a critical reviewer hat on. It's going to be our critical lens of are these ideas exciting? Are they transformative for cancer research? Are they bold? Are you really thinking about the future of cancer research? And also, how are you going to do that practically within your research lab in the Cambridge Institute? How is that going to merge with other research labs here? Are there collaborative opportunities? Are there core facilities that you're going to need to use heavily? So all of these things are going to be in our mind. We're going to wonder how are you going to fund this research? Who are going to be the key people that you're going to want to collaborate with internationally? Who are your competitors? Um, so yeah, really thinking about your big picture vision and how you plot that trajectory are things that I think make a really strong proposal um, as opposed to ones which don't give that level of detail and show me that path um, to the future with your lab in it. I think a very common mistake is not to cater the application to the research institute and having not a convincing cover letter that conveys the enthusiasm, the qualification for the job and the match with the institute. I think there's quite a wide range of um, applications that we see. Some common mistakes would be to not give enough specifics about the work that you're actually going to do. So a lot of people will give very ambitious statements but not back them up with any details. Uh, a common example might be, I'm going to use AI to analyse my data. Okay, but what form of artificial intelligence, what particular algorithms are you going to use? Have they been used before? Are there already references out there in the literature? Or are you um, just dropping in a buzzword into your application thinking that's going to help you? So really trying to bring in references, evidence, preliminary data, if you've got any, will really help allay any concerns that people might have about any um, kind of statements that you've made in the application. Proposing something that is a direct continuation of uh, your postdoc and also um, probably that has a, a, a limited view. So when you, when you submit a proposal, you want to sure clarify what you're going to do in the next uh, five to seven years but there's always has to be clear your your bigger vision um, and that is what makes the faculty and me in particular more excited about so the potential of a type of research uh, and so specific aims uh, for a specific timeline are good but that has to be in the context of a much larger vision a chalk talk uh, often feared by many. <laughs> a chalk talk simply means giving a talk without slides. Uh, in its essence, it's about trying to communicate your ideas, but without um, having slides behind you. It's telling a story. Think of it as if you were the telling the story of your career and plotting the story of your future career. You want to come into a chalk talk for a group leader position with a very clear set of aims that you want to achieve in your lab and you want to set out to tell the audience how you're going to do them and why you're the right person to do it. And people often fall down when doing this because they forget that a chalk talk is not just a seminar, it's an interactive discussion. So the people in the audience are going to start asking you questions, perhaps within the first minute or two if you say something that they want to clarify. And if they start asking you questions and you answer and then the questions continue, you might find yourself, if not careful, completely derailed onto another topic, spending half an hour talking about things that you didn't plan on talking about. 
to be successful, you have to practice a lot because that's not something that we are trained for. Uh, some people may be more um, prone to give an elevator pitch than others, uh, but certainly for a chalk talk, uh, you need to practice. You need to make sure that all uh, your aims uh, and what you want to have on the board fits on the board, that you are able to give it in about 20 minutes time because uh, the faculty will interrupt you. And probably most important, uh, because the faculty will ask you questions constantly, is that you bring them back to the point that you really want to say and make sure that by the end of the hour, you will be able to have delivered uh, all the aims uh, that you want to mention, not just spend uh, you know, 40 minutes on aim one, and you will uh, have to basically, you know, um, guided them by the end to uh, um, to bring them, lead them where you want to, you know, tell your story and what your vision is. So my advice is for everybody who is doing a chalk talk to speak to 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 us beforehand, know what the room looks like, know and plan your your chalk talk accordingly. For example, I brought my own pens, not relying on, on faulty pens. I had a I had a I had a sense of what I wanted to convey. I knew exactly what to put on the board and, and what to talk about. And then the my biggest advice is think your research program through within the details and, and be prepared for the questions of a really multifaceted uh, audience uh, or faculty as we are. So every part of your proposal will be not dismantled, but will be uh, critically um, uh, assessed and you will be asked upon and you need to also think of not on at the status quo, what you had thought, but beyond your program and where the future lies and where you want to be, not within the next three, five, but maybe also 10 or 20 years. Certainly, you need to make sure this is the right place for you. I think it is a fantastic institute. Um, but um, if uh, uh, your research uh, is not aligning with our vision, I think that uh, um, that might not be for you. Uh, I think you want to know uh, related to that what is ha what other research is happening in the institute. So do look up the group leaders, what kind of uh, research uh, they undertake uh, in your chalk talk. I think it's a really good idea to you know, mention, okay, uh, this would be a potential collaboration with uh, Group Leader X. Uh, I would really benefit from uh, this knowledge of Group Leader Y uh, and so on, because that shows that uh, you've done your own work, that you know where you want to apply. Um, and so this would be, I think, uh, first advice. Um, and uh, another advice is, uh, yeah, be prepared. Um, they will want to test your knowledge, not just about the research that you are going to do, but also again, uh, broader vision that you that you have, uh, um, and also uh, how you're going to structure your lab. They might ask you um, not just about the science, but also what kind of like group you envision to have over the following five to seven years. Give it a try and put yourself out there. So we have often open calls where we are not, we have no preconception. We are looking for academic and, and scientific excellence. And so just come and talk to us and come and visit, get a feel for the place. And also my advice is always speak to junior and senior faculty and really ask them what support in our nice CAUK family looks like. Personally, I would just say to be yourself and make sure that the character of who you are comes through in your application, both on the paper and if you come to interview. Yes. People tend to perceive that they should be a certain way if they're going to be a scientific leader. And I don't think that's true at all. I think everybody is born a scientist and has the potential to flourish into one. And if you're moving into a leadership position, you're going to be a, a leader in your own way. You'll form your own character and the own way that your own way that you decide to lead others. So for me, the most important thing is to be authentic and not try to pretend to be someone else through the interview process. Ultimately, you want to work with a set of colleagues who chose you for who you are and, and will want to work with you uh, for the rest of your career. And I think that's the most important thing personally.